The reason we can't die for the things we believe in is that we don't even believe the things we say we believe. So much noise without depth, no reality. But we are just rejoicing. Do you know what is happening in this city? Do you know there's a big prophetic house in this city? Eh? I saw their prize list. Not that it's fake. Oh. I saw the prize list. 7-5 for room. Eh? If you want to stand in healing line. You know how in aeroplane they have first class, business class, and all of us. Dukbe class. Economy. Eh? That's how it is in that prophetic ministry. 17-5. If you want to stand in a healing line, 35,000. If you want to be in the overflow, where the man of God will come and pray a general prayer of healing, the room rate rose to 700,000. If you want a one on one with the prophet in your room, you pay 700,000 to be alone with the prophet. Prophet, go deeper, sir. 700,000. Yet the Bible says that the prison gates are what? Open. Free. There are people who, no matter how they are, they are, they are, they are, they are seeing people suffering. They've never bought a shirt for a brother in church before. But problem has driven them to go and borrow 700,000 to have one and one with the prophet. Freely have you received freely give so that thing that you see that is big and crowds are getting there is merchandise he's buying and selling a man is trying to secure his belly and the belly of all his great grandchildren and he's doing it at the expense of men who have not become kingdom men they are babes pursuing after what the gentiles seek after they don't know that the priority for the believer is kingdom. Oh, he who dwells in the midst of the cherubims. Daddy, this preacher weeps. Shine forth in our city. Oh, that the days of the charlatans will end. I remind God every day. He came to me and he told me, I weep for my sheep. I weep for my sheep. Ah. The end of some of these people is going to be so dangerous. Because the, the Lord has a day of comfort, but he also has a day of vengeance. Some of them, the way they will end will be so terrible. They won't know that they are going to die. They will just sleep one day and not wake up. And at that time, you will find out that Everything that they had hidden will now be coming to the fore. People will now be seeing all the, all the witchcraft that has been happening on the ground. So once you have accepted the kingdom message, the idea of the kingdom message is to forge you into a kind of man. Let's go back to Isaiah. Oh, Berazaza. I feel fire in my belly. Lose a man Go to verse 3. He says, once he has given garments to the mourners, what will happen? That they may be called trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord, that he may be what? Glorify. The whole idea of the kingdom message is that God will take glory from our lives. I remember in Delsu, the Lord had begun to move upon my spirit. And people began to notice that this boy had changed. People who wrote me off, they wrote me off in fellowship. Because when you talk about chronic womanizers, I was a chronic womanizer. Unbelievers who knew that I was a Christian, my fellow neighbors in the hostel I was staying, they used to call my room slaughterhouse, abattoir. 
and yet I was a leader in fellowship. I was one of the prominent figures. If you see me acting drama, I acted drama once. A woman's issue of blood died. Yes. When I begin to act, it was like the spirit will come upon me. That's when I began to notice that this voice I had, that there was utterance on my tongue. I finished drama one day, my president came and said, no man ever spoke like thee. He said, you were quoting the same scriptures we have used in this fellowship time and time and again. But it was coming from your lips like fire. But then I was not schooled. Because you must become a student of your own spiritual journey. I didn't know what was happening in my life. I didn't know those were signs pointing that Satan was fighting something that was in my belly. So I yielded myself to Satan. Woe betide you that you are a sister that I bring you to my house. It was slaughterhouse. Nobody survives there. Nobody. Nobody. All the while that this was happening, I didn't know that the hand of God was trying to walk a great walk upon my life. I was written off. Some looked at me and said, nothing good will come out of here. And then God began to move upon me. 2003 everybody had gone home and I feel, felt the weight of his hand on my spirit he said stay I said no food to eat does anybody die from fasting that was my first journey into the world of no food no water I stood in my room tears falling from my eyes and this is not a recommendation I'm just telling you a story I stripped myself naked and I began to cry Lord, if you don't kill this thing, it will kill me. I began to beg him. No pride. There's nobody around. I was the only one in Emu Hostel and some cold boys that were hanging around. My mother kept calling. You not go come house. I said, no. I couldn't find an excuse. So I said, I'm staying to write my project. I stayed there. By the time they came into school, 2004, something had escaped from glory. Abarazaza. We did a vest all night, drama all night, and I came out of my cave. I stood in front of people and said, Let us pray. That's when I began to notice that the horn of prayer was on this head. Oh, 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 oh. Let the place be dry. No presence. Just give me an opportunity to pray. If I can ascend, Kabbalah, I will find a valve in the spirit. I will find one. Dear brother. I had never seen it before. I looked at people like this. They were going down under the anointing. I stretched my hand to, con to the congregation that was around. People were manifesting. And I knew that a portal had opened. So that day I stood in the line. We had just finished praying. People were on the line. Me, waiting to see me. I was not president of fellowship. I was final year brethren chairman. To gather final year students. Together, FYB so that they can give a gift to the church. So it was final year brethren prayer. My own fire FYB was different. You will pray in tongues. What concerns us with whether the fellowship needs keyboard? We can buy keyboard. But you won't leave this campus without fire. One of the prayer meetings we finished, a sister walked up to me. I thought she had a case. She held me and she whispered in my ear, I've never seen a man like you. We thought nothing good would come out of you. I rejoice. I was the one leading. Tears fell from my eyes. I said, so they had written me off. But in the kingdom, despise a man at your peril. Because he picked men from the dung hill. He can go to the darkest places of destiny. And root out a man that everyone has despised. And the Bible says he will set him. In the places where princes tread. Who dash monkey banana? Only if the hand of God raises a man. Kingdom men are not strong in their own strength. They rest in the strength of the Holy Ghost. It is by him. They are able to prosecute destiny. 
he says that God might be what? Glorified. Every time I preach, I go back to my room, I kneel down, and I say, Lord, who would have thought 2000 I walked into a confrontation? Submitted myself to be a man of the night. Writing people's wayek. Running from police. Sleeping in guard room. Going to the house of prostitutes. Who would have thought? He said that they might be oaks of righteousness. Planted by the Lord. So that the Lord might be glorified. Next verse. And here is where they begin to act. He said, these ones that have raised, they will build the old ruins. They shall raise up former desolations. They shall repair the ruined cities. The desolations of many generations. I'm showing you this. When we walk out on the field on the 22nd, we are not walking out as powerful men. We are walking out as men who bear his light. Who are seeking that God be glorified. Begging that the windows of heaven will open. And the spirit of God will light upon us. That the lost be saved. That the mad and insane be delivered. That the cripple walk. Because our destiny as kingdom men. Is that we will repair. The desolations of many generations. It doesn't matter how bad it has become. Just let a kingdom man enter that lineage. It might be for many generations. But the coming of that man will be the deliverance of an entire family. When a sister has built herself to that level, she's not afraid to marry into any family. Say witchcraft, they that family. Say now they are they like. Now that kind one are they like. How will I show them that the God I serve is alive? The more the witchcraft, the greater the glory. Verse 5. Strangers. These kind of people, they are not begging for supply. Eh? The Lord will begin to raise strangers. I read a scripture in Isaiah many years ago. Can't remember it now. He says, he called a man from a far country. And a ravenous beast from the east. And the only reason he's calling him is so that the man can come and fulfill his counsel. God. He will call a man from a far country. A man you don't know. Because the promise to the kingdom man, when you are submitted to the kingdom message, is that strangers. The context of this thing is that while they were in Babylon, they were slaving for Babylon. And God was saying, I will turn the tables around. Just as you slaved for strangers, strangers will slave for you. They will feed your flocks. Foreigners shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. Verse 6. Verse 6, help me, man of God. My time is gone. Verse 6. But you shall be named what? The priests of the Lord. They shall call you what? The servants of our God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. And in their glory you shall boast. Notice they didn't go pursuing the riches. Immediately their ordinations became accurate. That men could call them the priests of God. And the servants of the Lord. God began to channel the riches of the Gentiles to them. A kingdom man is a man the Lord can trust. Let me tell you three things the Lord told me. Then we'll begin to pray. I've run out of time. Three things the Lord told me about the kingdom man. Who is a kingdom man? He's a spiritual man. A man who has a true spiritual life. Has spiritual health. Excuse me. And understand spiritual growth. When we say spiritual life. Spiritual life. What do we mean? Life in the spirit. He's living life. Where? In the spirit. 
he has understood what we call spiritual knowledge not time he knows how to do business with God his reality is not the visible realm he lives from the invisible realm into the visible he's a spiritual man he does not judge by the seeing of his eyes or the hearing of his ears there is a spiritual detection system that he has within his spirit it is by that that he interprets signs he knows seasons he knows times he's healthy spiritually healthy and he's consistently growing a spiritual man number two is a processed man a man that is well discipled and taught he's a processed man well discipled and taught If we go to Second Timothy, you begin to see that Paul was saying, "The things which thou have heard of me, in the presence of many witnesses, he said, commit thou also to faithful men who can teach others." Discipleship is missing in the body. The average young person cannot sit down to be processed. Small realm and small revelation, you have taken off like a tornado, looking for somewhere to happen. Let me tell you for free, you are a disaster looking for somewhere to happen i was telling them in castle some days ago some sundays ago two sundays ago i said as you are now born again five years can a non-believer come and meet you and you will teach them the basic doctrine of our faith a non-believer do you know how to disciple a young convert do you know Is a kingdom man is a processed man. Hebrews chapter 5 began to tell us that there are various levels of spiritual education in the body. He said there is milk. Milk is for babes. But solid food is for those who through use have trained their spiritual senses such that they are able to discern good or evil. Paul gave Timothy counsel. He says, study to show thyself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. I looked up that word approved. It means to be certified after being tested. Hmm. That's what a kingdom man goes. He goes through testing. He goes through process. When you want to make a product, they will make one first. That one, they will put it through a series of tests. When it successfully passes and meets design, then they will approve it. Have you bought electronics before? And you have seen a sticker on top of it. Okay, approved. How many of you have seen that? It means that that thing has been tested. And it meets the original design. So we can mass produce. So Paul was telling Timothy, you must be a processed man. God must put his stamp of approval on your life. Lastly, a kingdom man is a man God can deploy. A kingdom man is a man God can deploy. Can God send you? Can he put his burdens on you and send you to nations? Young men are speaking in tongues in church and they can't see a girl pass and not look at her lap. And you're there begging God. The way body they do me. My destiny is not in this nation. Send me to Canada. Eh? You want to go to places where somebody can wake up in the morning and wear pants. In the name of freedom of expression. You've not been able to manage your appetite here where we still wear clothes. You want to go to Canada. And you think that God not answering your prayer is that he's wicked to you. He loves you too much. He won't give you a blessing that will destroy you. A kingdom man is a man God can deploy. He can send to campuses. And when I speak of man, in spiritual things, there's no gender. Man refers to both male and female. God can deploy them to the market. Deploy them to nations. Because they've been tested, processed, 
and they have been found not wanting. Tonight, I call you to a place where you will beg God, don't leave me like this. Walk on my own life. The kingdom does not advance by spirits. Dear brother, the kingdom advances by men. Men. We are all seated in this building tonight because 15 years ago, one man heard the Lord. He said, you will not get a job. You will get a job. And then you will build me a network. And that network shall be very great. The Remnant Christian Network is not born out of a man's emotions. Remnant Christian Network is not a denomination. It's not, it's not, it's not a religious garden. It's a strategy of the spirit. That's why we're all here. We're all here. If I had known 15 years ago that this is where I would be, probably I would have taken time to pray. God, walk on my own life. Rise on your feet tonight as we engage for five minutes. You won't have time to boot tonight.